All right, we are live. Hello and welcome. Anybody that's jumping on or watching this as a recording after the fact, um, this is Brandon. Hi. And I'm Marie. And we wanted to share with you guys today our best money practices, um, something that has been pretty important in our wellness journey has been getting our finances um, in check and getting our money mindsets in check. And so we wanted to uh, do a video today, have a group call on basically where we were with money and where we are now and share our best tips and tricks and uh, practices with you guys. And he's really good at it. So this is really exciting for everybody. So definitely take notes. Um, so we'll just share really quickly kind of where we come from, like a really quick one minute each, um, what our money story was i guess like where we kind of come from with regards to it and then um we'll dive into it and talk about um tracking and brandon's gonna go over an envelope system i'm gonna talk about our money love day that we do each week brandon's gonna talk about automating your savings and i'm gonna talk about paying off debt so we're gonna try and jam this all in in the 30 minutes that we've got i think we can do it oh yeah probably yeah. all right Speed around. do you want to go first with money story sure absolutely yeah uh so i guess my money story started out um you know grew up in a middle class family, um, parents both worked, um, you know, had okay jobs and stuff like that. You know, my dad worked, uh, you know, with his hands or driving equipment and stuff like that. So that's kind of where I grew up. And then, uh, you know, once I got into after high school, I, uh, I started working, you know, same kind of thing with my hands in construction and then eventually went to school to uh, do instrumentation engineering and did that. And, and along the way, you know, right out of high school, I, I started making money actually, you know, quite easily. Uh, my dad got me this job up north and I was making, you know, a lot of money for an 18 year old. And, uh, you know, so that was nice. It was really easy. But the bad thing about making a lot of money quickly is that you develop really poor habits. You know, at that age, I didn't have any expenses. So I was able to, you know, spend a lot and I was still able to save some because I was just, I was making so much and I didn't have any expenses. So I didn't have to budget. I didn't have to learn any of these skills that a lot of people have to put in place to you know basically manage their money and uh, so I didn't have that you know and then I went to school and you know things were kind of tight there but in my summers I was able to make enough money with these instrumentation jobs to pay for that schooling you know which was very fortunate again because lots of times either you don't have time to do that while you're in school or you know you're not fortunate enough to make enough money to cover all your expenses and so you have to get loans and stuff like that and um, but I was able to get through school not have any uh debts um and then you know start making money right away and and making you know pretty good money and uh you know that's exciting and stuff like that and then fast forward to today you're transitioning into um you know i'm a real estate agent now and you know essentially running my own you know business or uh you know i'm essentially self-employed so you go from making these you know regular paychecks all the time and getting used to that and maybe not tracking your expenses as as best you could and then now all of a sudden you have all these expenses your your paychecks aren't as regular and uh, you kind of have to to change your money mindset and for me it was it was kind of a change too, going from uh, putting in a set amount of hours and getting paid for those hours to getting paid for what you know or getting paid for a service um, that doesn't always directly correlate to how long you're working for like you might even only put in you know eight hours and make, you know, X amount of dollar, you may make a lot of money. And then other weeks you might work 40 hours and not make a cent because, you know, a couple of deals fell through or some things didn't pan out the way you thought. So just changing your money mindset around, okay, I don't necessarily have to work X amount of hours to make X amount of dollars. And, uh, and realizing that that transition can be work in your favor and it can be easier for you to make a lot of money. Um, but getting over that block because lots of people think that you have to put in, you know, this much effort or this many hours to get paid this amount of money. And that can be, that can be big, especially, you know, in, in this type of work or, or any type where you're, where you're looking after your own finances. Well, and for you too, like you, you can touch on really quickly too, since you talked about it, having like making like a, an awesome amount of money every mm -hmm. year, not having a good savings plan in place, buying a brand new vehicle, oh, yeah. having new vehicle payments every month. Cause everybody does it right. This yeah. is where everybody kind of keeps up with the Joneses buys like the new place and buys a new car and does all these things because everybody else seems to do it. And we live in a society that promotes going into debt mm. early on. And um, I think for you, once you realized, if I can speak to it, once you switched your money mindset around and started, we started really focusing on what we were bringing in and what we were spending, you realized, oh shit, buying a new vehicle probably wasn't the best idea, even though we love 
driving oh, it. Oh yeah, for sure. Like it just makes you completely look at those things differently, you know, and, and buying a new vehicle was one of those things it, you know, it was just like, okay, you got a good job. Now you can afford a new vehicle. So you buy one. But when you look at the numbers and stuff like that, even with warranty and stuff like that, if you, if you buy a new vehicle, a domestic vehicle in three years, it's already going to lose half its value. Mm -hmm. So you, you've just paid, you know, say you buy a, I'm throwing in a number there, but a $40,000 brand new vehicle. This is yours. Well, yeah. Okay. This so, so I bought a, a, you know, I buy a brand new vehicle, $6,000 in three years, four years, it's worth 30 grand. So I've just paid $30,000 for a warranty. Mm -hmm. Well, there's no way I would have paid for that much in expenses in breakdowns or maintenance if I would have bought a vehicle that was three years old. Mm -hmm. So in retrospect. I mean, in retrospect, that's a lesson you learn. Um, but a lot of times, you know, maybe you don't have that lump sum to buy a used vehicle straight up or it just makes more sense. Like it, it, it all depends on the situation you're in, but that was something that I learned and just looking at those expenses that I'm taking on that are going to be with me for a long time, right? Like same thing with, you know, you buy a house that maybe you can afford with the job you have now, but then it forces you to stay in a, in a job that maybe you don't like. It doesn't give you as much freedom and it all depends on the situation you're in, right? If you know that you're in a job that you love and you plan on being in that career for a long time, well then yeah, it, it maybe makes sense to, to buy that brand new this or that if you can if you like what you're doing and you can afford to make those payments and you don't see anything changing but i would say too to that like there is never really true job security well and you never know yeah you might end up losing that job and then you have these stresses of these things whereas yeah you know now i've recognized that i like having things paid off and not having that extra payment maybe i can put that into savings and stuff like that make that money work for you instead of dipping a debt payment okay i'm gonna share mine now so make sure we have enough time to get through everything so uh, my money story, my parents both work in class, same thing. Uh, mom's a lab tech, dad's a teacher, um, hardworking people, six kids, like didn't really get allowance, paid for all my own stuff from a very young age. And I had a real, uh, my money mentality was, uh, I don't have enough, but I also don't need a lot. Like, or yeah, is that kind of how it goes? I, I have enough as is. I'm not like super well off by any means but i think if i have too much money like that's unnecessary that you was had negative feelings around having more than a lot of money you need. yes because that was never the case it was always like be grateful for what you have this is what you have awesome everything's good as it is and having extra is just excess and unnecessary so that was kind of my money mindset so then when i started making money um finished my degrees and started working professionally i started making money and i found myself spending it really quickly because i didn't know what to do with it because i felt like okay i don't really know how to save this properly yeah carly's like yeah me too I didn't really know what to do with it. So I was just like, Oh, I have this, oh, I got to spend it. And I found myself spending so quickly on paydays. Um, you know, like buying people things, but like just spending money unnecessarily without saving because I felt uncomfortable having that amount of money um, in my bank account. Didn't know what to do with it, even though I was still paying off debt and stuff. So I incurred a little bit of student debt. I got, um, I paid my way through university working multiple jobs, just like early. And, uh, my second last year I got shoulder surgery and I couldn't work my waitressing jobs anymore. So I incurred some government debt, um, for my last two years of school. And it's crazy how quickly student debt can add up. I just feel for all the people who take on like six years of student debt. I took on like a year and a half or two and that was like 20 grand, which is crazy. Um, so I took on that, that, government debt and having that, like, I just hate owing money so much. And then having that mindset of, I don't know what to do with this money. I'm going to spend it did not work. It didn't work for me properly. So that's kind of where I came from with money. So I really had to switch my money mindset around to, um, to really reteach myself. First of all, the value of money. Second of all, that having a lot of money isn't a bad thing. And in fact, all it does is exacerbate who you are as a person. So if you're a good person, it's just going to make you a better person, able to do better things. And if you're an asshole, it's going to make you a bigger asshole. That's all it is. So I had to really learn that. And now my money mindset has shifted so much so that I'm like, Oh, sweet. I, I want to make as much money as possible so that I can actually do as big of uh, a difference as possible. So that's kind of where I'm at now. Um, with regards to money and having paid off my government debt, which is awesome and super fun. Absolutely. And that was something that we kind of like worked on together, but let's go really quick for the next like three, four minutes. Um, do you want to talk about tracking and, yeah. And necessary expenses. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, so one of the biggest steps that I guess I took towards, we took towards figuring out where our money was going. Um, you have to know kind of the situation you're in, right? So look at your numbers, you know, if you're in debt, figure out how much, you know, how, how far in debt are you? Um, 
Um, you know, if you're not, that's great. Um, but just taking a look at, okay, where am I right now and where do I want to go? And then tracking your numbers as far as, uh, like I recommend for a week, take a notepad and just write down every single thing that you buy. Because you're going to go to buy something and you're like, shit, I have to write this down and I don't want to write this down because mm -hmm. it's so silly that I'm writing this down. And then at the end of the week, you're going to look back on those things and be like, I really didn't need this. I really didn't need that. I like this, but I didn't need it. And then all of a sudden you have all these little things that were like $5, $10, $20, blah, 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 all the way down. And you just spent hundred dollars, you know, a few hundred dollars in a week. And you do that every week. You Correct. see all these little things <laughs> that add up. And all of a sudden it's like, well, that's thousands of dollars over the course of a year. That mm -hmm. if you just force yourself to put away into a savings plan, well, now you have thousands of dollars in that savings plan. And you're not really, you don't need those things, right? I mean, for the most part, this is, this is how people live. I don't know some, it might be in a different situation where you are really tight with their expenses, but lots of people are spending money on things that they don't, they don't need. Well, that's included. Like, no, that's included. And that my, was the situation like for us. Like my miscellaneous category. I have a miscellaneous. So like, I want you to go over the categories too. Oh yeah. Over, but like, I'm just for a really quick example, my miscellaneous category, almost every single month I'm over almost every month. And it's not that I'm like so loose with it now. Like I'm pretty conscientious cause we go over it like weekly with the money love date that I'll go over in a little bit here. But it just stuff seems to kind of come up every single month. So as, as you get more tight and pay more attention to your different categories, you really notice, Oh shit, I actually spent an extra $300 this month yeah. on X, Y, and Z. Well, and being real, realistic with your numbers too, because a lot of times you'll go through and yes. it'll be like, this is the ideal budget, but actually this is how much this really costs, or this is what this membership costs, or this is how much groceries actually cost. So I'd recommend going through, um, like and make a, yeah, make a list of all the things that, you know, are kind of your necessity. So uh, you're going to have rent, you're going to have, maybe you have a car payment, maybe you have your phone, your, and then, uh, so there's all this thing like your membership fees, whatever, are your, yeah, and necessities, but then there's like fluctuations. So there's, there are things that are the same each month, like your rent, um, Geology. your shake all it. Yeah. Like stuff like that, that are going to be the same. They're coming out of your account. Your bills maybe are coming out of your account every month. They're the exact same. So you know what those are. And then there's flexible things, but they're also necessary. Like maybe you're, you're paying gas, you need gas to get around, but it's mm -hmm. going to fluctuate each, each month. Um, your groceries, you have a rough idea of how much those are going to cost, but those fluctuate each month. So if you can find out how much those are costing you each month and then find out, okay, this is the amount of dollars that I'm spending each month and I almost need to spend each month. Mm -hmm. Then everything on top of that is money that you could potentially be saving. So let's say you have $2,000 in, rent and utilities and food and gas well then everything that you make on top of that money could be saved or spent probably but you know that's money that you could be putting aside and carly to speak to your question too for each category it totally depends on personal circumstance but for example um for mine my personal ones so i have these are my categories every single month that i go through and a couple of them fluctuate i do um my my automated savings. So to my RSP, I contribute like $200 every single month. So that's my number for that. And then I've got my beach body taxes is 30%. So I put that into a savings account. So then my spend category, I've got rent and utilities is 650 plus utilities. So whatever your rent is, plus your utilities each month, that's a uh, stable number. My phone is like always 75 bucks a month. My gas is around 75 to hundred a month. Shake was always 137.25, right? My groceries, I stay around 500 ish. Some months I go over, some months I'm last, it turns up for traveling. Mm -hmm. um, my plates on my car, every three months I pay whatever for plates and registration. Um, my subscriptions, so I figure out, okay, like I pay $10 for Spotify a month, I pay $20 for my coach fee, I pay um, $40 for my Beachbody Pro P90X Live membership, I pay $30 to, you know, like, so I just, whatever my memberships are, I think it's about $150 total. I track that every single month. Okay. It's $147 for my subscriptions. I add that into what I'm paying. Um, work expenses is a fluctuating one. Uh, travel is a fluctuating one. So for example, this summer, this month, I mean, uh, in June, we're going to summit. So obviously my travel expenses are going to be higher than usual. Right. And then I have a miscellaneous category. And then I also recently, because I've been using my visa so much for some big purchases, I have a visa payoff category and I'm trying to pay off X amount of my visa every single month so that I can aggressively get that down to zero ideally. Right. So those are usually my categories. It's just like rent, utilities, phone, groceries, gas, Shaco, plate subscriptions, miscellaneous, 
And then yeah. I think those are all of them here. And the, the thing is too, like we're at a place now where we've done this every month now. So we know what our expenses are. Like you might yeah. do it the first time and you'll be like, Oh crap, I missed this whole thing or I missed, you'll forget that like yeah. an insurance payment is coming out or something like that. And or you'll liquor. add that. Yeah. But that's like not a, that's just thing is, but we used to count liquor in our, yeah. in our budget. Yeah. Like whatever your, your thing looks like, but I mean, you'll, you'll forget about those things, but your major expenses, you want to make sure that you know what those are. And then you can go off that because some, like you said, after a couple months of doing this, you'll know what those numbers are yeah. and where they're around. Like you might not know exactly where your groceries are, but if you keep track of them for this month, then you'll know what they're going to be next month. Yes. And then you can play around with that. If you want to try and save some money there, you can figure out ways to, to save money within the category itself, right? Like maybe it's gas. Maybe you're like, Oh, I'm going to ride my bike. Yes. I, whatever your situation is, everyone's a little bit different in their categories are different, but well, and just like making it fun too. Like mm -hmm. we, we've done little challenges for ourselves where we'll, say, okay, we're going to try and make our grocery bill, um, four fifty each for the whole month and still eat awesome food. Yeah. So we'll like do our very best. And I don't know if there was actually a month where we paid four fifty each, <laughs> but like 500 is generally it's 500 each that. is kind of our number for groceries. And that might be higher than most people, but we choose to spend more money on good food because that's something that we value, you know, and, and, we, eat a lot, so we, and we eat a lot because we're, yeah, active. <laughs> and we love food. Um, but for example, one of the categories that we, um, it kind of started off as a budget thing and then it went more towards like a mindset challenge health thing but we gave up booze for a month like two years ago it was like in October and we were like you know what let's see because we were spending we figured it out we were spending like $200 a month on booze at least yeah. you know a couple cases of beer a few a few bottles of wine well and if you go out for drinks go out for drinks like almost automatically and it was like a know, few bucks. yeah it was a few hundred bucks and we were like holy shit like we're spending a, we're spending like grocery money basically on booze like let's see if for a month i think it was in october like two years ago or something yeah. we were like let's see if for one month we can not drink any booze and see how much money we save and we ended up saving like 300 dollars or something crazy because at that time we were drinking a lot lots of wine during the week and, and cocktails during the week and stuff. And then it kind of went into this other challenge where we were like, well, let's see if we can not drink for three months. So this year, this January, we didn't drink from January, February, March, all the way till April 1st. And it was crazy because it started off as like a budget thing. And then it ended up being like, uh, holy crap, can we do this? Yes, we can. This is amazing. We feel so much better thing. So we saved money, but then we also felt so good mentally and so good physically yeah. that we decided, well, we're going to do this every year, every January, February, March, we're going to kick booze and be sober for three months. That's yeah. awesome. You know, cause then summer months hit and you drink patio drinks and stuff. And even now mm -hmm. I'm finding myself spending more money freely because you go out for supper and you have three drinks. You go yeah. to meet somebody for a patio drink here and there. You go to somebody's house and you bring a bottle of wine, you know, like these things all add up. So putting that in your budget is super important. Mm -hmm. But, and you're, the nice thing about when you track your expenses is that, is they don't lie to you, right? They're going to tell you yeah. these things that are it's like food. that are are money based, but they're also a reflection of of how am I living? Maybe I'm like maybe you're spending a bunch of money on something that you really don't want to be spending money on, and it is affecting your life, like your life in other ways, like alcohol or, or online shopping or online shopping or something. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Maybe it's something that's like this is actually showing me something that I need to work on in another area of my life, but it's coming out and it's really affecting my my bottom line here monetarily like i'm using this as a coping mechanism kind of yeah absolutely because i know a lot of people that do that and like i've been totally guilty of yeah. that and actually and, and you know, shopping mostly, for i was gonna say we used to go to winners and we would both spend like 200 bucks yeah. we just go to winners on like a random wednesday and drop 200 dollars <laughs> each and yeah it's like discount shopping and it's awesome stuff but like we had so many clothes that now that we've gone through this process of minimizing minimizing um our closets and our house and all this stuff you but you almost have to set yourself challenges. You have to know yourself personally and set yourself challenges based on, okay, am I going to spend ever? Am I going to overspend if I go there? So we didn't go to winners for like two or three months. We were like, you know what? Let's just not go for like two months. It's kind of an all or nothing mentality, but we're, this is what yeah. we needed. So we didn't go to winners for like two or three months. And guess what? We kicked it, you know, didn't drink for a couple months and we kicked it. Yeah. So you sometimes have to like really put those stipulations on yourself. Maybe your thing is online shopping. I know a lot of people who are like, holy shit, like Amazon is my kryptonite. Yeah maybe for a couple months you just like don't let yourself buy anything on amazon you put stuff yeah. in your cart and like you want to get the little high i of, wouldn't even do i wouldn't even do that but you know but for some people maybe that's what they need is like that little high but right they like the search they like the stuff. searching and finding stuff so keep it in your cart and then you have to tell yourself okay i'm gonna wait 90 days and if in 90 days i still want this thing then i will buy it yeah. you know or books we would buy oh, we go to the bookstore books. and just yeah. buy like five or six books each and we and we have so many books love them we read them yes but you have to get to a point where you're like okay I don't need any books right now. 
right now I'm focusing on paying off my visa so that I can read these books that I have and then I'll buy new ones. Yeah. And that's something that if you don't go down and break down the numbers, you're like, Oh, mm -hmm. buying books, that's good. I'm feeding my mind and all this stuff. Yeah. And it's a positive thing, right? You don't even, you don't even think of it as having a negative connotation. connotation like, oh shit, I spent a hundred bucks on here and I still have like five books I haven't read. So do I really need to be doing this? Yeah. No, I don't. Okay. Let's move into, um, I want to talk about money love gate really quickly. And then I would love for you to talk about automating savings and I'll okay. talk about this and debt. Sounds good. So every single weekend, on Saturdays, so today we did it before this call, Brandon and I sit down and we do what's called a money love date. And we started doing this, I think it was a podcast, I can't it's remember. It Lori Carter podcast. She interviewed a woman, um, Catherine somebody, and her and her husband did this money love date. And I just thought it was the coolest thing. And this, this came about a couple of years ago. We started and it came about at a time when I didn't want to look at my expenses because I had my loan coming out. I knew I was overspending. I wasn't making a crazy amount of money as a teacher, you know, like with my coaching business, I wasn't making a crazy amount of money yet either. I knew I was like spending on excess things. I was going to target and dropping like 200 bucks on like candles and bullshit. <laughs> Seriously. Cause it's so easy to, right. And I remember that. I remember coming home sometimes and being like, what did I just buy? Like that was so dumb, you know? And so this, when I heard this podcast episode, I was like, Brandon, we need this. We need to do this money love date every week. I think this is going to really help. And then along the last couple of years, we both, because of him mostly have read a lot of money books, you know, like Tony Robbins, um, money master of the game. What's his smaller one? Unshakable. No, unshakable. 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 Dave Ramsey. Uh, what's that one called? Uh, total money makeover. Total money makeover. Um, what was the yeah. other money book that we read? You were bad at making money is a great book, but those, the Tony Robbins and the Dave Ramsey automatic millionaire, automatic millionaire yeah. and actually rich dad, poor dad. Yeah, um, Rich Dad that's a great mindset one. Yeah, those are all really good money books. So if you're somebody that's like, yeah, I don't really like reading about money. Um, I don't really like reading about money, but I know it's important. Those books were excellent for me because Brandon's more interested in reading about like investing and finances and he finds it super fascinating and is more like mathematical and logical. Whereas for me, I'm just like, okay, I want to make like as much money as possible, but I don't actually want to learn about the ins and outs of like Oh, the TFSA and like high interest, you know, like I just don't care about that kind of stuff. I didn't. Now I care more about it because it affects me. But um, those books are great, especially the Dave Ramsey one because he talks about the envelope system, which is um, really helpful. But yeah. anyways, every single week we sit down and we do a money love date, and we have a little. I have a little notebook, and I've got my three envelopes that I put my receipts in every single week. So I've got work purchases, groceries entertainment slash miscellaneous which is where like my gas and my extra stuff goes right so whatever that is so those are my three like envelopes i put all my receipts in there so that i know at the end of the month i can tally them up and make sure i didn't miss anything so i always take a receipt um everywhere i go and i put them into these three envelopes and then every single saturday we sit down and we go over those categories that i shared so i, I wish i had a blank one that i could share um, so every single week we go over and I share, I do those exact categories that I did before. So like I talked about, I have my automated savings. I've got my tax money that I need to save from coaching. And then I do rent utilities, phone, gas, shake, or groceries, um, my plates, subscriptions, work expenses, travel, miscellaneous, and then whatever I'm paying off for my visa. And every week what I'll do is I will write four categories. I'll show you what I do. Grosh, miss work and travel and take home money okay and then every single week i will add whatever i spent on groceries whatever i spent on uh miscellaneous so say walmart 1996 i write that down groceries independent 7234 um, travel. If I went, to, I went to Minot, so I would write down, okay, what did I spend on gas? What did I spend on food while I was traveling? And then work, if I bought anything for work purchases. And then every single week I write down my paycheck, my incoming money in this little box down here. And on the other side of that page is where I keep those categories. So that's where I keep those categories. And I have two, um, columns. I have my budgeted amount and then I have my spent amount. So as I'm paying for those things, as I have my phone money come out of my account that month, if it's the same amount and it's no more, like I write it down. So say for example, last month, my phone bill was like $5 more than it usually is because I uh, went to the States and used my data a little bit. So instead of being 74.27, it was 78.50 or something like that. I write that down in the spend category. So I have my 
amounts, or I, sorry, I have my categories, I have my budgeted amount that I think it's going to cost, and I have all my static um, numbers that don't change, and then also the changing ones too that are flux, and then I have my spending category, what I actually spent on it. So I find that writing those things down every single month is super, super helpful for me. Um, personally and that's what we do every Saturday so we just sit down and we go over what's coming in what did I make this week what did I spend this week put the receipts in the uh, proper envelopes and write down those amounts mm -hmm. that's what we do every week yeah basically like the money love date is like a course correction because we we I was looking for a ways to do this tracking ways to keep track of expenses and actually hit the numbers that you're targeted to spend that you want to stay within and I found just a monthly budget wasn't enough. You'd set your monthly budget and that would look great on paper. And for a week you'd be on pace and it would be fine. And then you just wouldn't track it till the beginning of the next month. And then yeah. you realize, oh man, I wait, I overspent here and here and here because you just didn't look at the numbers. So Every month. The nice thing about the money love day is you can look at it on, on Saturday or whenever you do it and be like, okay, well, I overspent a little bit here. So I got to try and spend a little bit less in this category this, this week. This week. Yeah. And that'll set you back on pace for hitting your monthly target for that month. Yeah. Um, your well, budgeted that, amount. That made us so much closer to our targeted spend yeah. amount because like you said, like you set that monthly goal and it's like the same thing as setting a yearly goal. You're yeah. like, oh, I have this yearly goal. I hit this in a year. Well, if you're not tracking and course correcting along the way, like setting like, for example, now we'll set 12 week goals instead of annual goals because 12 weeks, three months, that's not a lot of time. I can course correct really easily instead of between 12 months. So 12 weeks for me is way better. So this just breaks that down even further. So it's like, what can I course correct within a week? Say I have two uh, meals out that I didn't expect that I have two meals out. Okay. So then maybe I'm going to track and I'm going to try and spend a little bit less on groceries and a little bit less in the miscellaneous category that mm -hmm. month to try to like course correct and balance that out. So that's our money lab date. But um, I would love if you could talk really quickly about wealth simple and what we do with automated savings. Okay. Um, I guess that so that we talk about automating your savings because I think this is probably the easiest way to budget and paying yourself first actually. and paying yourself first. Yeah. Um, so if you're in a job that you have a set paycheck or you know that you're going to get paid, you know, every, guess, Thursday, or every Thursday and it's going to be around the same amount of money, automate your savings. So set up any on the other side, set up all the automatic payments that you can so that that stuff's just getting withdrawn. You don't even have to look at it mm -hmm. and then set up uh, some sort of automated savings so that you have a, a chunk of money going into investments for yourself. So before you even get a chance to spend that money, it goes into a savings account. So what we have, we use well simple, yeah. which is basically just an automated, um, investment company it's awesome and uh the reason that i like well simple is that it has lower fees than a traditional um bank or you know mutual fund um director and stuff like that so typically one of those funds would have a, they would charge about two percent um interest would act which actually eats up a lot of your um Savings. yeah well your yeah your gains your um interest growth um whereas well simple has like it, they charge 0 0.05 and give you a like very comparable competitive uh, return. Um, and you can choose your portfolio if you want to have like a medium safe or a higher risk portfolio, you can choose how much you contribute every month and there's an app. So you can go into your app, you whatever, have your like thumbprint security for your app or a password and you go in and you can check every week, oh, is it up, is it down? And you just, because you have that automated amount of money coming out each month, even if it's 50 bucks, every month it's going to accumulate the compound effect of that is going to grow eventually like i started out at a very small number because i didn't have a lot to contribute because i was paying whatever 600 dollars a month to pay off my government loan right so i started i said you know what i'm going to contribute 200 dollars a month to this um rsp because i know that this is first of all going to go against me come tax time which is a, or go work for me sorry yeah. come tax time and second of all this is savings that i'm putting away towards retirement that i'm not even thinking about because it's automatically coming out of my account every month and you really don't miss it like you really don't even notice that it's gone when it's automated like that so that's what i think what you're getting at with like automating as yeah. many things as possible so that it just comes out automatically yeah. and you don't have to think about oh shit i didn't save enough money to pay for this this and this or save money for myself yeah and it's the easiest way to budget so say you know that you're going to get paid let's say you're getting a thousand dollars a week so let's say you need six hundred dollars to cover your expenses mm -hmm. And then, so you have $400 that's either going to get spent or saved or whatever. So say you want to save $200 of that. So I would, you know, you have the $600 for all your expenses. The $200 is going to be for your savings. And if that's going right into an account, well, then you have that $200 chunk that you know that you can spend and you're going to be able to save and you, all your other bills are paid. 
So you don't have to worry about it. You can just enjoy and spend that money and have fun with it and know that you're saving and know that all your bills are covered. And that's, so that's the ideal scenario. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're in a different situation where your paychecks are sporadic or different amounts and stuff like that, it gets a little trickier because, you know, maybe you don't have that exact amount of money every month in the account and stuff like that. You have to get a little more creative. But if you're setting aside that, just I would get into the habit of automating a certain amount. And then when you can contribute more, if, if, if that's the situation. But ideally, if you know what you're getting paid, put that money aside out right away. Don't do it after you've spent your money because there will be nothing left or there will be very little left. Mm -hmm. You just... That's what will pay yourself first. Yeah. So just pay yourself. And honestly, after three months, you're not even going to notice that it's, it's missing. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to look back at the end of the year and be like, holy crap, I've actually saved a few thousand dollars. And that's just going to continue to grow. And don't even look at it and just think of that as not even your money. It's just there for you to grow Later until you retire yeah and don't worry about it fluctuating stuff like that because markets can be volatile and whatever but it's just it will be fine and safe and just there for you yeah it's just so long as you have that in place so so that would be an rsp a tfsa yeah so i'll talk about those two really quickly um yeah okay so rsp tfsa these are probably the best two tools that we have to use as far as um, saving saving um, RSP, the benefit is that that money goes, um, counts against your, what you owe tax time. Yeah. So it's, it becomes a tax write off. So you end up saving money that way. Um, but then when you withdraw it, you get, you have to pay taxes on it then. But usually when you withdraw that money, you're in a lower tax bracket because you're not making the income that you were making when you put that money away. So that's so wait, the benefit. Just, just to clarify that one. So your art, just, just for anybody, cause for okay. myself personally, Okay. When I didn't know about it, that would have been too quick. Okay. So, so like RSP, you contribute. It's your retirement registered savings plan. You contribute that money. Just like we were saying, the automated wealth simple. That's going towards my retired retirement savings plan that I'm not touching forever until I'm retired. And I'm not taking it out because if I take it out, I get a penalty and I get taxed on it basically. Yeah. So what you're just saying about being in a lower tax bracket is when you eventually do touch that money, you're going to be retired. So you're not going to be making as much money. So you'll be in a lower tax bracket. You'll get taxed at a lower rate. So it won't be as big of a deal yeah. with you taking that money. So out. let's say right now you make a hundred grand a year and you put some of that money into RSP. Well, that RSP money isn't getting taxed. So it counts against it's not getting taxed. So therefore, let's say you put, let's say you make a hundred thousand dollars, you put 80,000 or you put $20,000 into an RSP. You're only getting taxed on $80,000 and the rest of that money is saving and allowed to grow tax free. But then when you take out that money, you get taxed on it. But when you're making a hundred grand, let's say you pay 50% in taxes. Whereas when you're retired, you have an income of like, let's say zero, except for the money that you're pulling out of your RSP. So maybe you're only making 30 or 40 grand a year. Well, now you're getting taxed at like 20% or 30%. Mm -hmm. So now that money's been able to grow and you save money on it now. So it's, it's, that's the benefits of that one. Um, so that's a great long-term tool. Um, whereas a TFSA is great too. It's allowed to grow uh, tax-free. Um, so you, all the money you make on it is tax-free, which is spectacular. Mm -hmm. And when you pull it out, you don't get taxed on it. And most banks, but, you most know, banks have a TFS, like a tax-free savings account yeah. that you can access with paying like a very low interest or you gain interest on it, I guess. Yeah, you get interest on it, but you don't get the tax break that you do from the RSP. Right. So both. So you still get initially taxed on it, which is fine, but you don't get taxed when you bring it out. So TFSA is great if you're going for a... Saving for a car or something. Yeah, like a short term or long, like a middle term savings goal. So say you want to buy something that's X amount of dollars in five years, use a TFSA. You know, but both are great tools for, for long-term saving. It just depends on what you like. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm going to talk really quickly about paying off debt just because we don't have that much time left. And I really wanted to cover this part because I know that most people um, have some debt, <laughs> myself included. Um, no. So this is the deal with debt. We are taught that it is A-OK -okay to go through school, take on debt, whether it's line of credit, student debt, government debt, um, whatever you want to call it, buying a new car debt, you know, house debt whatever we are taught that it is a-okay to take on as much debt as possible because we'll pay it back later and that's just the way the system works and that sets a lot of people up for failure because people go through university or college or trades and they aren't 
first of all, might not even get a job right out of their diploma or degree or whatever. But second of all, might not even be making close to what they need to be making to come out even. We have lots of friends who are in this situation and it's a really common thing. So for a lot of people who are like, holy shit, I owe whatever, more than $30,000 of debt, it can be very debilitating and a lot of people just don't even look at it and they pretend like it's not there because they don't, it's too painful for them to look at. So a really, really good idea if you have any kind of debt is just like we talked about with the money love date, sitting down and just really like getting right in front of the numbers and understanding exactly what you owe and breaking that down into a feasible, reasonable, um, goal, a long-term, I guess, long-term or short-term, as short-term as physically possible goal. So my best tips for paying off debt, my best tips for how I personally paid off my debt, um, while like trying to build my income and, and all this is I paid it off as aggressively as I could personally afford. So instead of making the minimum payment, um, what I did was I doubled I doubled what I could have been paying every single month so that it was almost painful for me to let go of that money every month. But that helped me pay off my debt like five years early. So for me, that was worth it because I had to, yes, kind of like pinch. I know not bad, right? I had to pinch pennies in certain places some months and like we still traveled and we still did awesome stuff and still spent good money on groceries. And I still bought like thing gifts and clothes and stuff and, and um, wasn't too like broke about it. But I, I wanted to make that amount that I was paying off monthly almost painful for myself because I knew that if I didn't pay it off aggressively, I would just let it continue to be the minimum payment, which is what most people do on their visa or whatever. And then you end up paying so much more in interest that it's not even worth it. You know, you end up wasting thousands of dollars that you could have saved on interest because you didn't pay it off quick enough. So for me, paying it off as aggressively as possible that you can, uh, that's feasible for you is really important making it fun. I made it a competition for myself. Like every single month that I would look at it and be like, Oh my God, it's this much less. It's this much less. It's this much less. And what I did is I set myself a, um, treat yourself goal for when I paid off my debt. And I said, okay, when I pay off my debt, I'm going to get my, my, my eyebrows microbladed. And what was, that? I was going to get my eyebrows microbladed and get, buy myself a new pair of Nikes or something. So whatever your like goal is that you are going to buy yourself as a treat, once you, um, pay off all that debt, as long as you're not putting yourself back into like $5,000 of debt, <laughs> don't make it counterintuitive. That was a really motivating goal for me. It was like, okay, if I pay off all this, when I pay off all of this debt, I'm going to buy myself X and Y because that'll be my, um, yeah, you did it. Good job. And I'm, and sorry, just to say to this too, it wasn't that I was paying them off with or paying for them with my visa. I was making sure I had the money to buy them, you know, mm -hmm. so then you don't go back into debt. Um, talk about paying off, uh, Oh, highest your, interest. Your highest interest. Yes. Um, that's a great one. So if you have a credit card that you're paying, you know, 18% interest on and you have a student loan that you're paying 5% interest on, focus on that visa payment first, get that paid off because yeah. you're paying, you know, 18% interest. That's ends up being a lot of money. Yeah. Um, you know, and if you have maybe a line of credit, use that line of credit, pay off the visa, then, then focus, focus on the line of credit and just kind of work your way down through the highest interest rate. Well, that's what I did too, like in the last couple of months here with my visa, because I owe, I bought a bunch of big ticket items, you know, like plane tickets and hotels and uh, my meditation teacher training and all these things were like big ticket items that added up really quick on my visa. It's like, holy crap, my visa is like 19% interest. Like I'm going to be paying an extra like $150 a month on interest if I don't pay this down really quickly. And so what I did was I used my um, line of credit from TD that I like had nothing on, had paid it off a couple of years ago, use that line of credit to pay off the visa. So then the visa was gone and the line of credit interest is like 4%. So now I'm paying off this line of credit um, that paid off my visa and I'm only paying 4% interest on it. So that's the lower number that I can, it's way more manageable and I can just like aggressively pay that off now without having to worry about paying an extra hundred dollars a month of interest because of my visa being at 19%. So that's a really, that's something that I learned from you, which is really awesome. And then I think one other thing we should talk about too with debt, because this is how people can um, stay in debt slash go into debt is the latte factor. Mm -hmm. And the latte factor doesn't have to be an actual latte. It can be so many different things. Like for some people it smokes, for some people it's um, buying coffees out, for some people it's cocktails after work, you know, 
online shopping, online shopping, whatever, whatever your latte factor is, your latte factor is essentially what is the small incremental cost that you are uh, spending every single week that are adding up over time, you know? And so for me, there was a few months where I was going out for a lot of coffee with friends and potential clients and coaches and all these different um, wonderful people. But at the end of the month, I realized, holy crap, I just spent like $80 on coffees you know, because it's nothing to go spend $5 here, $5 here. And then for some people, they even take it up a notch or three and they buy a coffee every single day before work. Well, instead of buying a coffee every single day before work, that's going to cost you like two or three or $6, depending on your preference. Um, And if you go to Starbucks or not, (laughs) depending on your preference, instead of doing that, why not for a month, see how much money you can save and make your coffee at home before you leave for work. You know, why not, if you're going to go out for a coffee date and meet somebody um, at a shop, get a tea, you know, or get a whatever cheapest thing on their menu that you're still going to be able to enjoy. That's not a $5 frothy latte, you know, and like there's a difference between sometimes treating yourself and sometimes um, being a little more frugal, but your latte factor is a thing that you wouldn't otherwise think is adding up and costing you extra money every single month. That actually is. And that was the wine thing for us. Yes. That was, okay, well, we're having, you know, a glass of wine with supper and stuff like that. A bottle of wine. Bottle, and yeah, a bottle of wine or whatever. And, you know, having drinks on the weekend and stuff like that. And when we looked at that, it was, that was our latte factor. That was the thing that was accumulating into a few hundred dollars every month yeah. that we essentially could cut out and, you know, in this case, would it actually improve our life. Um, and so finding that thing that you're, you're spending money on that you don't necessarily need to spend money on. And then you know, asking yourself, okay, well, how can I, how can I still enjoy myself and, you know, spend a little bit here, um, but also kind of stop this essentially negative behavior and save some money. Well, just process. swap it out. You just like swap behaviors. It's the same thing with eating nutritious food. It's the same thing with exercise. It's the same thing with like quitting a bad habit. You just have to replace it with something that you enjoy that's going to replace it. You know, when people are trying to quit, smoking or something it's like can you replace it with going for a walk outside can you replace it with a herbal tea can you replace it with doing yoga you know like it's trying to find that thing that yeah. can you can replace it with and, and make it like you said make it an experiment make it a challenge for yourself mm. to do it for you know a short period of time don't tell yourself okay i'm giving this up forever yeah because that's really me? that's really hard to to get over that mental hump of i'm going to go i'm going to I'm going to just give this up cold turkey. I'm never going to do this again. And then it's like, well, that makes me miserable. And I don't like that. But if you're like, Hey, I'm just going to give this up for a month. I'm going to challenge myself to do this for a month. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of fun. You're like, Oh, well, let's see if I do it. And then maybe you get to the end of the month and you're like, Oh shit, I don't even need that in my life. Like yeah. this year, my thing was, I'm not going to buy a piece of clothing. Yeah. All year, all year. And it's been great. And I don't even think anything of it. In fact, I feel like I have more stuff to wear. Cause I've just been like, you know, you get more creative and stuff and it's actually fun. And you're like, Oh, okay. Yeah. And so finding out ways to do that in every, you know, other aspects of your life. Yeah. So I think between um, looking your numbers in the face, tracking them every week, uh, if you have debt, paying it off aggressively, making yourself a game plan to pay that off every month, like just chunk, just chunk by chunk by chunk, um, paying off that uh, highest interest first, you know, or using like your line of credit to pay off your visa and then paying off the line of credit, for example, instead of having like multiple credit cards or multiple accounts that you're paying off and paying interest on every month. Um, using an envelope system for your receipts. Mm -hmm. You could even use an envelope system for your cash. I used to when I was um, waitressing and had more cash, like paper cash in my life. Now it's more plastic, right? Uh, When I had more paper cash, so I used an envelope system and I would just put the amount of um, cash in each envelope at the beginning of the month that I needed and I would just use from that envelope and when the envelope was done, I would not have any more more money for that category. So I would put my like, at the time, $500 for my rent, $400 for my groceries, whatever, $60 for my gas, $50 for my fun fund, you know, like this was back in my university days, but I did that. And then once that fun fund was gone, if I spent that $50 out one night, well then guess what? I wasn't going out and buying, um, like drinks or going over appies or anything for the rest of that month. I would go maybe, but I might not go and like buy a meal out, you know, because I knew, okay, I already spent it. I already spent my money from that envelope. That's that. So that's another way to do that. Um, is there anything else you wanted to add? I feel like we, I think we touched on everything that we wanted to touch on. Carl's, can you, um, like, you can unmute yourself if you want, but let me know if we missed anything or went over something too fast. No, yeah. it was all good. I would say just, like, make your finances as simple as possible. And, like, depending on each person's work situation and how they get paid, if you're in a, like, typical, I mean, if you're in a typical situation where you get paid regularly, 
you can set up your finances so simply that you don't even have to budget. You can literally just have the bank take off X amount of dollars for savings, you know, with online banking and stuff like that, all your bills can be paid through that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you're just paying for groceries and, you know, things that are changing each month. But if you've already paid for your savings, then you don't have to worry about overspending because you've already done that. So you can, you can budget without budgeting. And that's what I'd recommend for everyone. If they can set up some sort of system like that for themselves, where, where they're, they don't have to work or worry about their willpower because it's already automated. Well, I would say you still have to worry about your willpower though. Cause Visa is super easy to spend. Yeah. But I, and then stay away from your, yeah. But that's the same thing too. It's like, if you're going to use, if you're going to use your visa, pay off your visa mm -hmm. every month Yeah, or get, or get rid of it. Cause it's like, it's the interest rates are brutal. Yeah. It can be super dangerous for some people, you know, what do you guys do when you do go over a month, like do you cut back? on a certain like subject or what do you do when you honestly like I used to give myself a really hard time about it and I used to be like beat myself up about it because I was like man I set this thing it's like setting a goal and not hitting it mm -hmm. I was like I set this goal I can't believe I didn't hit it like I'm shit you know and then I would get down on myself about it and I had to stop doing that because I realized okay I have a budget in place I'm I'm being proactive about this every single week life happens stuff happens i'm paying for some extra things sure and then i had to balance between am i am i okay with sometimes not paying off my entire visa every month but still getting to enjoy some things and buying some extra gifts or or going out for a couple extra dinners um even though i am budgeting you know like i had to really figure out the balance between that and i decided for myself personally that i I do better when I am proactive about it. Yes. Conscientious about what I'm spending and what I'm saving. Yes. But I'm also not feeling like I'm totally in a box rigid. It's the same thing with eating. If I feel like I'm totally restricted, I will binge. So same thing with money. I was finding that if I was feeling like I was like, ah, oh, gotta be so tight and stuff, I would go and spend like $200 at winners or something. And that's when that happens. That's when that weird like mental complex kicked in. So for me, I had to really find a way to like ebb and flow it. Um, while tracking it every week. But honestly, that money love date every single Saturday keeps me in line because it reminds me every week, oh yeah, I have this this month. Oh yeah, I'm saving for this. Oh yeah, you know? And even putting a goal, like uh, like I said, if you pay off your debt or pay off your visa at the end of the month, oh, I want to uh, buy myself a new pair of Nikes. I want to buy myself whatever it is, a well, new computer. It doesn't have to be a monetary thing either. No, right? it, can be, it can be anything. It could be like I'm treating myself to a day off or something or like a spa day at home or something, you know, it can be really anything. Yeah. But well, that's huge. Well, and my biggest thing too is, is knowing where that money's going. So say you, you have this budget and you went over a little bit and you're, but you're looking at your numbers and you're like, well, I have this, I have this monthly fee come up for me. Sometimes this happens. Like I'm like, Oh shoot, I forgot to, I had to pay yeah. this monthly fee for work to keep working. Well, it's like, I'm not going to not pay that. And I also, it was just, I just forgot to put this in. So I'm not going to beat myself up because I forgot to pay my monthly Shrek dues or something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so like that'll come up and I'll, you know, you got to be a little bit easier on yourself because you're like, I just, I forgot to account for this. And yes, it's still money coming out, but you got to be easy on yourself. And then there's, and then there's being too, too, lean, too lenient on yourself and you're like, Oh, I, you know, I deserve to buy this or whatever, yeah. you know, cause you can hard. get into that mindset where you're like, I worked hard for this. I can buy my, whatever this, yeah. and you're just getting yourself out of track and then telling yourself that you're right for doing it. Yeah. And I was, you know, you get in when you, I find when you're working in a job that you don't necessarily like, this is a behavior that comes up. You're like, yeah. Oh, I just grinded for 40 hours this week and it sucked. I'm going to treat myself to some sort of shopping spree. Everything. I'm going out for <laughs> supper. I'm going to go for drinks or whatever. And you feel like yeah. you earned it, but it's still setting you back in your, in your financial goals. And then this, the thing too is, is getting clear on why you want to save money. Yeah. You know, maybe it is paying off debt, but, but if maybe What's you're, maybe if you're past that and you're, you're looking through investments and stuff like that, you know, what does that dream life look like for you? And how much is that going to cost? Cause it's probably not as much as you think it is. And once you have that solid number, um, in your mind, putting money away in investments and stuff like that gets easier and more exciting. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. I still don't know how it's, it's still recording. That's incredible. We've totally gone over the 40 minutes, but, um, I don't think I have the premium account. Maybe I do. <laughs> Anyways. Um, okay. I think that's all we want to say. Carly, do you have any other questions that you think would be helpful for other people to, um, learn about? I think what you just said too, about the, 
understanding that like your dream life probably doesn't cost as much as you think it costs. Mm. That's a really big one. And that's could be for a different day too, but a lot of do like a whole topic on that. Yeah. Like, uh, people think, sorry. Uh, Oh, I didn't know that. Cool. Okay. Thank you. That's fun. Now I know. Um, Okay, so the last thing we'll just touch on then because you just brought that up and I think it's a good point to end on is a lot of people think that their dream life costs more than it actually costs. You know, people think about like living on an island and, and getting away from it all or whatever. That's not usually what they want anyways. It's just this like pipe dream thing, but whatever, we'll talk about that later. It's fulfillment, right, from within. Some people think that their dream life costs way more than it actually costs. And they think, oh my God, like I need to make a million dollars in order to buy the house that I want, to buy the car that I want, to be able to wear the clothes that I want, to eat the food that I want, to drink the booze that I want to drink, and to go out on these travel adventures that I want. You really don't need that much money in order to do it. What you need is to have a more disciplined plan of action that you can save so that you have that extra money to go travel. You know, we did Asia for like 10 weeks a couple of years ago and it probably really only cost us like four or five grand. Well, yeah. And you look at all the money that you save by not renting here, by not paying for groceries here, by not paying for gas here. Yeah. And like phone bills were down and all this different, it's... all these different things. So just really keeping in mind that, um, it's not a lose lose cycle and you saving is actually you showing yourself respect. It's you showing money respect and then more money comes uh, from that because of the law of attraction. Right. Do you guys have a set amount to have in your RSP for when you retire? Yeah. So Brandon's really good at this one. That is a very long term goal, but it's so yes. worthy. And actually Brandon just like probably got goosebumps because he gets really excited about this one. So you can talk about your. Okay. So <laughs> basically, basically this is this is the number it'll be different for for everyone and stuff like that but you need to find out the number so it's the number that you can have in your savings that's going to grow and you can pull out enough money to live uh for a year and that money's that that interest. set amount's going to just keep growing off interest so so let's say you have uh i think i worked out the numbers and it was like if you live on uh Forty thousand dollars a year, mm -hmm. which is which is fine if you don't have any expenses when you're retired. You're just going to have your living expenses and whatever. Um, this is like just a, a kind of a ballpark number. But if you have that and you're gaining, you know, you're growing it at eight percent interest every year, the amount that you're pulling out is less than the money is growing. So that 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 not that amount of money will just continue growing even though you're pulling out of it every year and living off that money. So that's for me. That's the most exciting thing is having this chunk of money. That's just growing and you can just live off it and do whatever you want. Right. I mean, it's not like you do it. Want to, like, when I think of retirement, I don't think of it just quitting work and sitting on a beach and getting fat and drinking beer. Mm -hmm. Like that's great for a couple of days, but then what do you want to do with your life? You know? So it's like that money is supporting, you know, all the other ventures that you want to do travel. Um, maybe you want to like do some other type of work or something like that, but it's the freedom to do those things and not have to answer to anyone else or, show up to a job you don't want to and do well, that stuff. True. It's the choice. I think it's the choice that you get to yeah. do I want to work and what projects do I want to work on and I still have enough money to live off of so I have no stress. And the number, because this is really motivating for me, the number that you would get for that forty thousand dollars, I think you said it was seven fifty, wasn't it? Isn't that correct? Yeah, I can't remember. I can't remember all the deals like I would have to so again, but if my number was like seven if I can seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. If you could save seven hundred fifty thousand dollars he would make enough interest off of it that he could live on that like forty or fifty thousand dollars a year, and what was it? Is that how it went? Yeah, it was covered. That would cover the expense. That would cover all my expenses. And you could never, plus, you wouldn't have more. to work another day in life. So, like, basically, the pipe dream, like the long term goal, is to save seven hundred fifty thousand dollars by using these practices that we just went over. Save that X amount of money, that seven fifty, and once you have that amount of money in your bank account, you are laughing because you're getting paid off of the interest and you're living literally off of interest every year. So that's why it's so powerful in the compound effect of that saving, yeah. which is why automating the savings, even if it's only fifty to two hundred bucks a month, adds up so quick. And with the span of a few years, you can have it like doubling and quadrupling once you um, start getting into like the thousands and, and tens of thousands of savings. Yeah, and that's going to fluctuate depending on volatility in the market and stuff like that. But that's mm -hmm. based on a very um, I don't know that like a, a safe amount of steady growth, which the stock market has seen over like a hundred years. So yeah, you're going to see years where it's going to plummet stuff like that. But if you don't panic and sell all your shares when it's down, then you're going to be fine. Yeah. And then the last tip too, we'll end, we'll end, but the last thing I want to say is, um, just to like recap. So 
highly recommend starting a money love date once a week and writing down your spending and your what you're making. Um, automating your savings. Check out Well Simple. It's an awesome, awesome company. They have an app and their customer service is super awesome. They don't have specific storefronts within the cities, but they are super quick to help. And that really helps me because I didn't know anything about where I'm going to invest and, and which portfolio to put into, like, to put my money into. So they're very good at showing you like, well, this is this and this is this, what do you want? And they have people who um, work behind the scenes to help you with that. Mm -hmm. So it's basically like hiring a financial advisor for free to, to help your money and you can always um, switch it around if you choose. Mm -hmm. So uh, doing that, paying off debt as aggressively as possible, um, as is, I would say like on the borderline of discomfort for you to pay off every month yeah. and then um, pay yourself first. Yeah. Right. I think those are probably all the tips that we would yeah. um, go with. Yeah. Track, write it down. It's going to be uncomfortable for you and it's going to shed a bunch of light on where your money is going. Yeah. And then figure out too, like if I'm spending money on online shopping, for example, what am I trying to fill in my life that I'm, that I'm using that as, you know, I could say the same thing for food. I could say the same thing for booze or gambling or all those different things. If you find yourself um, maybe not acting in moderation in one category, what are you trying to satisfy in yourself um, through that avenue? So mm -hmm. that's that. So anyways, yeah. thanks Carlos for joining us. I'm excited. I'll post yeah. the recording. And um, if anybody has any questions, if you're watching the recording or anything, um, you can just reach out and ask questions. And basically we wanted to do this video because being mindful about your money decreases your stress levels, right? Increases your quality of life, increases your impact, increases what you can do, how much you can travel. Like we traveled every single, I traveled personally every month of 2017, every single month I went somewhere and I would not have been able to do that had I not had these money practices in place and had I not had the, had these automatic savings in place and paid off my debt and all that kind of stuff. So these, this works. And if I can do it and come from a place of like, I don't need a lot of money cause I don't know what to do with it. And I'll just like spend it. If I get it, if I can do it, then definitely you can too. That's kind of, yeah. Yeah. So there, that's our money love date. <laughs> Thank you so much, Carl. I love you. And um, I will put this up as a recording ASAP. See you, Carly. Right on. Bye.